in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed by reason of the fallen nature all of us by default submitted in adam to the governing authority of satan hallelujah that's why the bible makes us to understand that we have been translated from the kingdom so it is a kingdom the kingdom of darkness into another kingdom he calls it the kingdom of god's dear son so when you get born again that's what happens in the realm of the spirit a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son and the moment that happens to you the governor of the kingdom is sent into your life hallelujah as a non-believer the Holy Spirit who is the governor of this kingdom has a primary ministry of convicting you of sin of righteousness and of judgment John chapter 16 tells us he said when he the spirit of truth is come he will convict you of sin of righteousness and of judgment when you now become or enter listen let me tell you something friends getting born again is not all it's just the beginning i follow me now there are so many believers who think that all there is to the christian life or the kingdom life i love to call it is just to get born again and so we get born again there are so many people that get born again and we leave them at the gates of the kingdom they don't know what else to do and they come and say okay so now what am i supposed to do i will say well keep keep praying fast once in a while read your bible and hope that one day the trumpet will blow and the people cannot understand after six months they are caught up with boredom and they cannot understand what kind of system this is hallelujah and they come and they say well i've been born again i say who has not been born again let's continue being born again just remain born again hallelujah but there's more to the kingdom life than just getting born again hallelujah your being born again is only the entrance to the kingdom say after me the entrance to the kingdom it's like when you, you you get born again you are giving your admission letter into the kingdom hallelujah and the moment you get born again there are two things you get familiar with number one is the constitution of the kingdom what we call the bible the bible is the constitution of the kingdom inspired by the governor himself on behalf of the king hallelujah brought to teach and to train the citizens of the kingdom to give them the mindset of the priorities the culture the value the nature hallelujah in this constitution you get to understand the character of your king you get to understand his desire his project his agenda that's what the bible is all about the bible is not just a book for deliverance it's a book that gives you an orientation about the king and his life and his character hallelujah so when you begin to study the bible you begin to understand the nature and the character of the king you understand that this is how he operates we begin to understand that our king is a king of love that the law of the kingdom we live in is the law of love are you following me now we begin to understand these things and then we also begin to enjoy the ministry of the governor the one we call the holy spirit the bible says the whole, when he the spirit of truth is come it said he will guide you into all truth he will begin to expound to you the ways of the kingdom communicating unto you the values of the kingdom hallelujah he will first and foremost walk on your mindset say after me mindset when he walks upon your mindset you come to a point of alignment to the ways and the patterns of the kingdom at first you will go through a lot of conflict the bible makes us understand in galatians chapter 5 from verse 16 it tells us to walk in the spirit so that we will not desire 
will not gratify the desires of the flesh he said for the spirit lusted after the flesh and the flesh after the spirit and both of them are consistently in conflict because they represent the manifestation of two kingdoms are you following me now and so when god begins to introduce you to his system it's usually challenging at first why because it will mean you laying down your ideology and your mindset are you following me now the world system is built upon greed and fear and terror and all of these things and hitherto our lives have been bounded by fear and greed and selfishness but when you come into the kingdom system the governor of the kingdom through the constitution begins to explain to you the modus operandi of the kingdom then you begin to see in the constitution of the kingdom that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. And is antagonistic to the ways of the world. Hallelujah. And the king is such a loving king that he does not force you to do anything. He allows your will to come into play. So you can choose how far you truly will become the citizen of the kingdom and to represent him. And it is given unto the governor to empower as many obedient citizens so that they can prove to the world that they are true citizens of the kingdom that's what we call the anointing the anointing is God's authorization upon your life validating that you are a true citizen of the kingdom hallelujah praise God and so we receive the kingdom by embracing the king when you get born again you receive the kingdom into your life into your heart you receive the governor of the kingdom the one who represents the parliament of heaven here on earth so earth is a colony of heaven and according to god's design and desire he wants that it will happen here in the earth as it is in the heavens and so it's the primary responsibility of the governor to search the mind of the father and find out what it is and to communicate it to the citizens of that kingdom are you getting blessed it's a total paradigm shift from what is being taught in church and let me tell you something everything you ever have and everything you ever become if it does not have its bearing around the kingdom it will kill you that's why we have a lot of rich people who are liabilities to the kingdom because they do not understand the message and the character of the king are you following me now and so you get to meet the governor of the kingdom the Holy Spirit and God designed it in such a way that the moment you are born again your spirit is capable of hearing and recognizing the voice of the governor he said my sheep hear my voice he didn't say they are trying to my sheep hear my voice hallelujah for many believers when we get born again then for those that are Pentecostals, we move a step further. We get filled with the Holy Ghost. Then you fall under the anointing. Ba -ba 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 -ba. You just turn and then you get born again. And then many people just stop there. So what is it about praying in tongues and just moving? And then they say, just keep praying. There's a real devil in this kingdom. Just keep praying. And the person says, okay, so I'm praying in tongues. And he's just praying. Ba -ba 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 -ba. What is the prayer? To what end? Hallelujah. To what end is our Bible study? To what end is... Let, let me tell you something. If we do not understand our goal and our purpose, our spiritual investments will be a burden. That's why for many people, prayer is a burden. For many people, the study of God's word is a burden because we don't know to what end. It's like a student reading without knowing what he's going to do. Hallelujah. Every time you read, you understand there is an exam. That goal encourages you to read whether or not you are ready to. Are you following me now? When we understand the agenda of the kingdom and the concept of the king, it gives us the impetus to want to get everything that the king has for us. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that the king has an agenda. Say after me, the king has an agenda. And what is the agenda of the king and the kingdom? As I announce this, you check your life. 
if you are not directly supporting this agenda you are called a rebel so after this announcement there will be two straight lines drawn in this meeting those who are actively supporting the advancement of the kingdom and those who are becoming liabilities to the king and you are going to hear it very very clearly are you ready to write the agenda of the kingdom very simple the king has an agenda what is his agenda the agenda of the king for this season is that the governing influence of his kingdom be replicated across the earth the governing influence instead of the increase of his kingdom and his peace there shall be no end the governing influence his character his nature his culture be reproduced across the entire globe hallelujah that's what we call kingdom advancement promoting the character the nature the culture the values of the king and the kingdom that we represent hallelujah and this first occurs in the hearts of men hallelujah the method is to first establish the kingdom in the hearts of men that's what we call soul winning i follow me now but that's only step one to establish the kingdom in the hearts of men to bring them to a point where they like us will subscribe to the government of this king by laying down their lives and saying take over my life and then number two to begin to infiltrate the systems of the world with the values the culture of the king that's what we are going to be discussing kingdom advancement so what is kingdom advancement the promoting of god's agenda the agenda of the king every one of us has a part to play in that ultimate promotion that's what we call purpose are you following me now your purpose on earth is your role the part you have to play to promote this universal agenda Thank you Jesus this is the current agenda of the king that we partner with the governor of the king having been taught the values the culture the lifestyle and you see God does God cannot send you the king cannot send you to represent him until he gives you a message until he schools you are you listening to me you must become a true citizen of the kingdom before you are allowed to go and reproduce that life that's why when God calls a man he builds that man then he sends the man that's what koinonia is all about hallelujah right now God is giving us the mindset of his kingdom helping us to understand his ways his operation bringing us into intimacy with the governor of this kingdom the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is not a Pentecostal phenomenon many charismatics and pentecostals have abused him and reduced him to tongues he's the governor of the kingdom it's beyond tongues and prophecy and falling down and standing up are you following me now he's the one who gives us direction he's the captain the one who is overseeing the progress of this kingdom advancement so we have a responsibility to partner with the governor to bring many under the rule of the king that's what we call soul winning so so winning for many people and unfortunately for many denominations has just been a strategy to add to membership hallelujah so for many denominations what we are interested in is not to have many citizens of the kingdom but to have many members of our churches so you see someone who is born again he tells you we are in the same kingdom. He said no way no way if you are not under my denomination you don't belong to the kingdom interesting that's the nonsense that is going all around God is not teaching us denomination and dogma. He's teaching us kingdom. Are you following me now? That the most important thing, all of the denominations are only prophetic platforms. Hallelujah. When we understand this, we'll stop discriminating ourselves. Because I wonder what we are going to do in heaven. That big table in the last supper, there's only one table. The Bible doesn't say there are many so you better love your neighbor because if your seatmate belongs to let's continue 
Hallelujah. And then to replicate the life and the culture of the king. Say after me, the life and the culture of the king. Let me have one Yoruba person, one Igbo person, and then one northern. And quickly, quickly, three people. Let's do that quickly, quickly. Yoruba, Igbo. Please come, come up, three of you. No, no, no. Hallelujah. Aaron is from Kaduna State. She's from the East. And Ejimi is from the what? West. Now, listen, listen. All of these geographical locations have certain things. Are you following me now? They have a common language. They have a common culture. They have values. Is that correct? When a Yoruba person, especially a, a well, it, it happens with everybody really, but especially the ladies, want to greet, what happens? They prostrate. Is their culture. Are you following me? So, you can see them manifesting their culture and it tells you where they are coming from. Is that correct? When you hear them talking and they say eh, share and all of that, you know that you can't mistake in that and say it's full and hallelujah. Are you listening to me? And then for the Igbos, they have I we had a sumptuous meal. It reminds me of a sumptuous meal to the glory of God that we had on Sunday in Pastor William's house. I appreciate them. You don't know what I appreciate them. <laughs> hallelujah. I ate a very delicious soup called in Salah see that that's the benefit of kingdom <laughs> hallelujah now she comes from the east and they have their culture their way of life and their language are you following me now he comes from the north hallelujah and we have our way of life praise God and now when you see this tree they are ambassadors of their culture is that correct everywhere they go when you see someone at you are in washington for instance and you're going to the airport and you see someone just proceed ah are you a she and then, say, this and that, that. And then you just greet you know you just bow here and all of that i say are you a yoruba that's nice it connects you are you following me now please i'm trying to communicate a message i hope you understand what i'm saying so as citizens of the kingdom we have a culture that the world should recognize instantly are you listening to me when you see a yoruba person you know instantly when you see an Igbo person even if a yoruba person wears kaftan his culture will betray the kaftan he's wearing very quickly you just know this is a yoruba person hallelujah are you following me now how come there are many christians and there are few kingdom citizens it tells you that there is an understanding of the culture of the kingdom that we do not have we have many believers across many churches and many christians but the world is still contending whether jesus is truly king that means that the citizens of the kingdom are just doing religion and doing christianity and have not come to a point where the world can see and let me tell you the world is not supposed to see different we are representing different kingdoms and people ask i say who are you christian who are you christian they say how come two of you seem to be conflicting are you are you following me that's why we are taking this teaching because that's how the church will beam as the light to the world the bible says that there are certain traits and signs that characterize citizens that belong to that kingdom there will be something when you in bible and, and in ancient time when you saw a jew you would know instantly by their manner of worship hallelujah they are dressing their language and everything they were revealing that they were Jews. God bless you. Please sit down. Hallelujah. So our job is to first imbibe and embrace the culture. Now the word culture is not a demonic word. I know that um, in a Nigerian and African context, I know that there are many wrong things with many cultures. All right. There are very healthy sides of culture, respect, love for God. But there are many unhealthy aspects of culture idol worship and so on and so forth allegiance to other gods and certain unhealthy practices hallelujah but then the kingdom of god has a culture that's why we sing the song your kingdom reigns you get the song now your kingdom reigns then we say above all 
that means there are other types of kingdoms but we're saying lord we choose to bring your kingdom above hallelujah so we say lord your kingdom reigns your governing influence is superior to every other kingdom in my life so that when you see me before you call me a yoruba person you should first call me a kingdom citizen if your earthly culture is superior to your kingdom culture then you are not a true representative of the kingdom hallelujah kingdom advancement so you first receive the kingdom and then you are taught by the governor of the kingdom you are equipped he trains you hallelujah and there are four principal ways to replicate this kingdom hallelujah kingdom advancement is a perfect blend of four things number one the character of the kingdom character you see that we teach about character there's no time in the church age where we need to talk about character than now we have so many anointed people anointed from head to toe who lack the character of the kingdom and our lifestyle and our character betray what we attempt to portray our praying in tongues is corrupted by a character that is not consistent with the king that we have that's why we emphasize character one way that the world will see and know that we are true kingdom citizens is by the manifestation of the character of the king galatians uh, 5 verse 22 gives us a list of what we know as the fruit of the spirit bible calls it love joy peace patience gentleness faithfulness self-control he said against this there is no law and so any citizen of the kingdom who stays enough with the governor will find himself manifesting this character suddenly you find out that you step into a system where there is hate and what comes out of you is the love of where there is sadness i love a beautiful song that says lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase hallelujah he said lord make us instruments are you following me now so when you step into a place where there is bitterness you manifest the joy of the spirit so when people see you going through the same thing with them while they are languishing and complaining they see you laughing and you're just saying lord you are faithful and they say i cannot understand what is this you just loved lost a loved one and instead of you to be insulting god and talking you say lord i love you i love you now and they cannot understand i love you tomorrow i love you forever you just hear a bad report from the doctor and instead of panicking you say no there's a light in my soul in spite of all the darkness that surrounds me and this light that i see only comes alive every time i hear your voice and people begin to note your life for behaving strange they say that's what they saw in jesus christ the moment jesus walked they say who is this the way he's teaching his way of life they saw him with unbelievers and instead of castigating them he was showing them love they said what kind of person is this he began to reveal the superiority and the, a foreign culture only comes alive every time i hear your voice number two the manifestation of the anointing is one way we advance the kingdom because although we are in the world we are not of the world the world cosmos we call it the social system hallelujah the social system satan being the god of this world 
the bible calls him in ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 the prince of the power of the air the spirit that walketh in the sons of disobedience that's the characteristic of those who are outside the kingdom disobedience and rebellion hallelujah in the world system they hail you for disobeying hallelujah as guys when you disobey people disobey parents disobey authority they say man and you're like hey you just touch your head because it's a system are you following me now it's called cosmos let me tell you where it started from it started from a man in the bible called cain the bible says and cain departed from the presence of god he came out from under the governing authority of that king and the bible says cain built a city a type of a kingdom after the name of his son enoch and all kinds of rebellious activities began to stem from that system and then nimrod in genesis chapter 11 took over and he said let us build a kingdom let's build a city whose power will reach to the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves and right now what is happening in the world is the rebuilding of the tower of babel i'm going to be showing you five pillars and areas of kingdom influence thank you jesus for your word the entrance of your word gives light understanding to the simple so the anointing because satan is alive there's sickness everywhere oppression everywhere hallelujah and in luke chapter 4 when jesus came he began to speak and he said how god anointed jesus of nazareth he found where it was written in the book of isaiah isaiah 61 he said the spirit of the lord is upon me for he has anointed he has smeared me with the holy ghost and with power he has empowered me to do the following to preach the glad tidings to the poor to bind up the brokenhearted to set the captives free so the manifestation of the anointing in your life helps you to begin to release the reality of the kingdom hallelujah that's why when you walk up to someone who is sick someone who has cancer and you say i bring you the superior power of the kingdom i represent these are two kingdoms standing and you demonstrate the superiority of your kingdom and say in the name of the king of my kingdom i'm standing as touching his authority i command this foreign cancer go the cancer going is proof that your king is truly king that's why miracles they are called miracles signs and wonders they point somewhere that's why we hold our miracle services that's why all of our meetings are power packed many of you who have gone on our facebook i'm sure you've you've seen the great testimony that we have the latest really that we have right now very powerful testimony hallelujah about two or three um fridays ago a woman not even a believer hallelujah came and she stood outside here had cancer hallelujah it was acute and uh, you know it was breast cancer and they were going to cut off her breast from shika verified hallelujah and she just stood here and saw people and say what's happening here and they said it's koinonia just hearing the word like you are hearing and we're just praying hallelujah and she just stood we're touching the authority of the king and right there she just said let god you know let god heal us too now instantly she was healed i was with her on sunday we don't announce miracles that we don't verify there are medical reports to this effect verified i spoke with her i don't mean recovery instant healing and wholeness of cancer <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah demonstrating the superiority of the king so the purpose of miracles is not to make a name for the man of God or to make a name for the ministry. All this nonsense that people do. That's why a true servant of God will use miracles as a pointer to reveal the kingdom. Are you seeing that? So if your miracle and your manifestation of the gift of the spirit and your operation of the anointing are not signs leading men to another who is greater than you, then you are betraying the king and you are termed a rebel. And we have many rebels overseeing many ministries standing in the place of christ not allowing many people to come into the kingdom and not moving themselves so they have become the jesuses for many people 
but every true servant of God is supposed to be an usher leading men to the king when Paul went to a certain city and they saw him he performed great miracles they called them Zeus and Hermes the Bible says Paul tore his garment and said we are but ordinary people John speaking said that I may decrease so that he my king will increase and any true servant of God any true ambassador of this kingdom must live to promote the king and the king alone hallelujah are you getting blessed tonight number three prosperity the subject of prosperity has been a very very controversial one for two reasons number one people have tried and tried and tried to get wealth and it has not come they have tried to use worldly ways to get God's wealth hallelujah and they have been frustrated because it has not come and so they say just forget anybody you see blessed especially young people just know that these people are cutting corners but that's not true hallelujah Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a says cry yet saying thus saith the Lord my cities true prosperity shall be spread abroad that's in your Bible cry yet saying thus saith the Lord of hosts my cities true prosperity so prosperity is a weapon listen many people try to acquire wealth so that they become happy many people try to acquire wealth to prove to their parents and loved ones that they are not poor that's nonsense are you listening to me hear me when you understand the agenda of the king you will know that you really hate the king by becoming poor hallelujah for many of us our concept of prosperity is to accumulate money and have wealth and have people bow at our feet and lick our leg the bible calls such people rich fools the issue is not the rich the issue is that the person is a fool why a fool because they do not understand the purpose of prosperity the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them there are many people being destroyed by their prosperity building a wall around themselves and making money their confidence he said woe unto he that puts his strength in a man hallelujah when you want to organize a crusade we've had the privilege of organizing some crusades over the years and this crusade spend we spend money are you listening to me prosperity is a tool with all humility if there's anything you appreciate in this place it was not gotten by tongues are you listening to me the people outside are comfortable by the grace of God watching the projector you are comfortable watching in the projector you're sitting and there's light there's the fan blowing you I hope you know that all of these things have financial implications let me tell you something if you truly love God you will embrace his economic system to be empowered for the sake of his kingdom you cannot help the poor by becoming one of them So it's not the issue of me i don't like all these canal things carnality materialism is not having materials materialism is the influence of those materials upon your life when christ is above anything in your life it does not destroy you that's why people are dying dying in haiti the throne of god is still made of gold he will never reduce it to silver And so you must believe in the wealth of the kingdom it's a tool to advance the kingdom let me tell you something do you know how many believers have bowed down to Baal because of money statistics tells us that about 90 percent of divorce cases that we have even in nigeria today are directly or indirectly related to finances many of our ladies that sleep around for money do they sleep with us how much do we have as young people is it not those who have money that come and take them and we have many church people just dancing in the morning early in the morning in the morning i will rise and praise the lord and satan who is the god of that system when they finish praying they come out and they don't have food to eat and satan stands and said i will give you all this if you would just bow and the people say we preach in church and say don't bow and they say so what do i do they say i don't know but shall don't bow 
and the man is saying i must pay the school fees of my children the bible says any man that cannot cater for his family is worse than an infidel and we say don't be corrupt don't loot they say okay teach me god's way we say forget it don't loot and when the man is under pressure he will sign that document when the lady is under pressure she will sign and say to hell with anything and then we keep looking and say the ladies are corrupt the young people are poor the bible says the poor the rich it didn't say the rich christ the rich will rule over the poor are you listening to me so you better undo this poisonous mindset that satan has put in believers as long as we remain in poverty there are many churches crying and knocking at the gate of government preaching lies and prophesying lies seeking favor nonsense because we do not understand that we are ambassadors of a superior kingdom for many people the wealthy people in their church have taken the place of the holy spirit and it's what they want that is being done what are we saying hallelujah and so because i gave a seed of 30 million naira, i come and tell the pastor there are some people that hate me preach on hatred the pastor says yes lord and he comes on stage he said i was sleeping by 5 a.m and the lord told me son stand up i have a word for you and i had hatred in my spirit shout hatred can i tell you something friends i have said it people have termed it to be arrogant i'm sorry if you think it's arrogance let me tell you something the wealth and the prosperity of this ministry is not tied to any man it's tied to the direct hand of god that's why we preach the way we preach without apology we bring the uncompromising word of truth because i tell you under god we have not bowed to bear and we will not bow there is a way you eat the king's food and you cannot talk against the king you can't eat the king's food and talk against the king but we are that remnant that uncompromising generation that will stand and challenge the gods of this system that's why we are teaching what we are teaching so prosperity is very important number four it's a language many people out of their quest for humility have rejected is called influence i want to show you how god designed his kingdom to be advanced influence look up let me do a little experiment sweetheart come all of you appreciate this lady i mean a, a real ovation for whatever reason just clap keep clapping just turn keep clapping everybody i mean clap and shout look at them wait hold on hold on hold on look at what is happening to her she's happy and enjoying it although she cannot understand this same character or this same attribute is inherent in every one of us including the religious people I've not seen anybody that frowns when they clap for him we all desire influence for parents when they call your child and the first position is you see the man sometimes trying to package himself and then he tries to find different ways of accommodating come on am I talking help me how much more the king that you represent the bible says the hour has come john 17 verse 1 it said now the hour has come it said glorify thy son that thy son may bring glory to you that's how god gets glory when the sons are glorified glorify now thy son that thy son may bring glory to you are you listening to me To reveal his glory and his majesty is found in psalms 145 and the hebrew word used here is called doxazo a display of his glory to let the world know and let me tell you something when you come to a position of influence let me tell you the advantage of influence the hearts of many are connected to you and at that point it's easy to change their hearts look at me do you know that if michael jackson just lift his hand and say i get i'm born again one over one million people can be born again instantly that's the power of influence 
there are many young people sagging their jeans down cutting their heads into pieces trying to look like people who have influence and the church who are supposed to rise up there and create a true picture of what the kingdom represents have been allowed to chicken out let me tell you something if you do not love excellence in your life you are frustrating the agenda of the king because when you are excellent and you are competent you will gain what we call influence when you gain influence you will come to a point where you are a voice and at that point anything you say when Cecilia Ibru was having a Thanksgiving the number of unbelievers that came for that Thanksgiving why because they need her they don't love God like that but they need her so they had to come hallelujah and I or Richard Jaffo preached his life out. He said, now that I have this caliber of people, let me use the opportunity and preach every devil out of them. Let me tell you something. There are certain classes of people that your tongues will never make them come to you. It's your influence. The Bible says, see it that way man diligent in his business. He said he will not stand before mean men. He will stand before kings. I was watching the Forbes, Forbes um, first 100 world's richest people there's no believer in any of them about 95 percent of all of them are members of freemason illuminatis they are the ones who control the education of our children they are the ones who control everything many of you do you know many believers just say whatever will be will be this world is not our own we don't love the world the bible says for god so loved the world that you are hating hallelujah are you getting blessed this is a thought-provoking teaching it's not just some church activity it's supposed to compel us to rise up hallelujah by the grace of god because of this platform that god has given us it has given us a measure of influence is that correct and that's why many of us can come i would not be able to go to all your houses one by one and call you but through the medium of influence what happens you can come around and the message of the kingdom can be communicated there are six prophetic areas where the world satan has captured god bless you sweetheart thank you very much hallelujah many people watch mtv and watch channel O, and we frown they asked one of the mtv directors one time and said how come you have influenced children of ages i think from ages eight to 16 and he laughed he said we have not influenced them we own them we own that entire generation that's what he said and it's not a lie they have designed systems let me tell you how the kingdom advances through these things mindset say after me mindset, mindset. the world is a system that gives you a mindset are you following me now so an average child the moment he grows up i mean the moment he is born he's exposed to a system that begins to give him a mindset let me show you six areas that the church has neglected in our churchianity and satan is using it and advancing his kingdom christianity is the only religion that holds crusades after crusade after crusade but there are many ministries and movements that hold no crusade yet they are advancing at the speed of light because they understand the structure of the kingdom number one sports sports is an area where the tower of babel is being built hallelujah right now sport has become a religion i hope you understand that there are many people who have made merchandise out of sports and there are almost no ambassadors in that sector of the kingdom why because we have taught people the moment people begin to sense the anointing they tell them kai that means one day you stand on the pulpit can i surprise you hear me those you call ministers are those the bible calls the gifts that are supposed to train the ministers the ministers are those sent to these systems to represent and reproduce the life and the character of christ hallelujah sports number two in the area of arts music fashion this is an area that the church has neglected 
you just need to own your radio and you hear all kinds of things from morning to night and those people have paid their price they are competent so people say so long as they don't mention satan i will listen you know i like it you come to church here it's only in church that you see people sing no rehearsals they don't do anything they just walk hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah every kind of excellence and mediocrity is found in the church whenever you hear quality sound good music everything know that it is satan who is being promoted and we sit down and watch and many times we collect offering and say lord let it be for the advancement of your king what are you saying the advancement of his kingdom is not theory are you getting blessed please because we are going to pray i'll soon stop here and then it's a series so we'll continue every time you see excellence you need to go where unbelievers are doing something that glorifies satan and you will see levels of excellence and competence they are sound they are organized they are excellent and they directly promote satan but how about it ends? mediocrity is the most important thing the voice doesn't matter it's just a revelation and say who and the keyboard is for 10 minutes he's trying to find the key punching and then he's smiling you don't provoke yourself the bible says by the truth that's why i say you are called into fashion who do you know in fashion let me i don't know anybody oh okay one person versace these are the systems you want to conquer and you do not even know them those in the world the sports people the media people those at the forefront of music and fashion day and night they are building themselves they sign contracts with satan and they keep investing in themselves you ask them where are you going they keep innovating things because they live for the glory of satan but we have many believers who cross our legs and we think god will do everything and you say i know one day the top is my portion you really think so the top is your portion how we do invest in ourselves we just come and mumble tongues for one hour and then we say my destiny and then you go to a place and they send you out they say no job for you and you are angry why will i give you a job when you are not competent why should i give you a job when you make my company lose are you get are you am i provoking somebody let me tell you whether they draw cross with anointing oil on your head there are certain things that only competence in partnership with the holy spirit will give you believe what i'm saying i pray in tongues but we are the nehemiah generation that understand that with one hand we hold the sword but with another hand we keep building so many lazy believers who are not doing anything in their life you say i want to be a writer you don't know any writer you don't read anything about writers you don't have any article about a writer and he say one day i'll be at the top every time you see an unbelieving writer he say one day i'll challenge you you really think so am i provoking somebody number three politics and government it's an area that requires the influence of the kingdom many of the policies that punish us in this country today were enacted by people who do not understand the structure and the concept of the kingdom hallelujah and you can laugh about it and think it doesn't matter until they begin to bring into the house of assembly that they should permit gay and permit lesbians and then we say hey is happening Nigeria? Is happening? where the it wasn't enacted by angels it was enacted by human beings you can imagine if we have people who understand the value and the structure of the kingdom not religion men who understand the operation of the kingdom hallelujah another area business in the area of business there are many church folks we've left the business of the people who say ah business business is such an ugly thing it's a corrupt thing forget jare swindle you see believers there's nobody that does clean business so forget about their tongues can't you be the first who will not bow and they are the ones in control of the finances and they move people wherever they want hallelujah 
you can sit down and see a company that has kingdom believers and your director can just look at you and say i don't like you you are fired and in an instant this guy was praying and fasting for a, 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 a boss project he suddenly changes his prayer point oh god will my life not move forward and those who have the well do not fear god they cross their legs and play believers like a chess because we do not understand that these are the structures of the kingdom and the moment they see certain people rise to that area they stand and preach and say forget all of the people that are doing this you will perish with the world are we ready for change if we are let me tell you the next revival that is coming is not going to happen in the pulpit the next set of apostles and prophets are going to be sent to these systems that's the structure of the coming revival so for many of you who are envisioning coming to stand one day here one day you will come and you will not find anybody because the believers are busy repro reproducing god's life another area family satan is killing families we do not understand that that's a system can i tell you something for those of you who are married and are in ministry or those who soon get married can i tell you something your family comes above and before your ministry hello before you were born christ has been preached after you die he will still be preached when you see an armed robber on the street he had a father and a mother correct we do not realize that according to god's principle and structure the family is supposed to be the first encounter of that child with god's life and the kingdom life hallelujah sorry let me have one sweetheart come let me use you as an example come appreciate this beautiful lady <laughs> wonderful children of pastor williams come sweetheart quick 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 hallelujah now i've had the opportunity of visiting pastor williams house again and again and i've seen the kind of love and training you can imagine these little children at their age at their age where what were you doing some of us were far from the gate of the kingdom but you can imagine when we say pray if we are praying for one hour these children are praying for one hour when we say speak imagine what this lady will do when she gets to 13 years old are you are you seeing how that family life is important there are many ministers that leave their families dying and they are running to go and save the lost they are going to take nations and their children are pioneering another move they are not aware of <laughs> hallelujah is that let me tell you if you are not ready to train your children in the fear of the lord don't get married don't give birth are you listening to me very important and that's one area satan is perverting the family life like never before people are losing priorities and they look at children and when they say bring this child to church they look, look and say ah, ah little children like this but these little children can go and watch pornography at their age on the internet and no one stops them the parents pass and see the children they say ah okay children say with their little thing then one day the child tells you mommy i've been the queen of the coast since three years the queen of the coast <laughs> queen of what i thought you were young <laughs> hallelujah can i tell you something let me challenge parents here and prospective parents the word train up a child does not mean discuss with them it makes it means make them do it if i'm going to church my child is going to follow me no matter what the argument is we'll talk later <laughs> hallelujah because rebellion the bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of the child the rod of correction does not mean kill your child i say i will kill you bring me belt bring me belt and you beat the child i will match you i'm the one who will kill you by myself before you kill me i'll kill you that's not kingdom training the bible doesn't say train up a child in the way you want him to go there is a pattern that you are not the one who designed it as a parent you receive it manoah said give us the blueprint of how we will train this child hallelujah bless this lady i love you god bless you sweetheart. hallelujah there are many parents 
that for your children the first time they hear i love you is one guy who comes with his baggy jeans and his chain with a gun on it and then he comes and says hey, how are you i love you and although the lady is really embarrassed by his outlook she cannot deny that it's a word she has always wanted to hear and then she says, i hate you i hate you and then in the night she flashes him and then he flashes her back Then when they're about to sleep between 12 and 1, flash again or high. Then the guy calls, yeah, I knew you would call. And later on, you find out why a nice church-going girl suddenly begins to follow someone and is corrupted. Because a family where there is no love, a family where there is no togetherness, a family where the parents are not humble to say I'm sorry when they need to say I'm sorry. That kind of a family is not a true picture. The first example of God should be seen in a father. The first example of the Holy Spirit should be seen in a mother. The first example of unity should be found in the couples. Hallelujah. To train the children in the fear and the admonition of God. I have a dream. That after 20 years of marriage, you come to my house and see us dancing and rejoicing. No rat race, no fighting up and down. I'll forever be chasing after you. That's what you hear us singing. Because all the laws that make for peace and prosperity and joy, we are adhering to it. Are you getting blessed? I'm provoking something. The last area, media. Right now you can just log on and browse pornography for free. It has already been paid. Satan paid people to prove that Jesus is not lord he's still paying people hallelujah you just open any a nice christian site with a little clip five minutes they say pay fifty dollars then say i'm not ready and then somebody say come and see i had an encounter with satan it's free on youtube watch hallelujah are you getting blessed the media it's just right now that there's a media revolution God is raising media giants. For some of you, as I mentioned this area, something in your spirit says, are you hearing? Are you hearing? God is telling you, are you hearing? The moment the spirit of prayer began to come on you, sweetheart, you just say, pastor. Who told you it's pastor? Maybe it's media or fashion. Many of us just think ministry is about standing and you envision where you have a congregation of 5,000 members and then as you are coming, they just bring water for you and say, Daddy, sir. If that is your concept of kingdom advancement, there's need for real repentance tonight. These areas are the areas that the church have left to the world. And can I tell you something? Our praying in tongues will never make meaning to the world until we begin to infiltrate these systems. That's why we are holding this teaching. Hallelujah. But I know we are that generation. That the next set of sports people. I look forward to times when before they start playing. While a stadium is gathered. Or after doing all of those things. And, and scoring goals. They give you an opportunity to talk to 6 million people. And you tell them I speak under the authority of the Lord. Whose I am. And who I serve. That statement alone breaks someone who has been mentoring your life and said, this is my mentor. I'll do anything he's doing. And now that he has mentioned Jesus, what is it about Jesus? And they begin to search and God will lead them to a site and they will check. Jesus is Lord.com because the media giants are already doing their work there. And then you read and know. Let me tell you, if we depend on only our 50,000 and 500,000 man crusade to get people born again in the next 100 years we will not affect the world in five minutes the mindset of a generation is changed by an evil program on the TV five minutes a woman like Oprah Winfrey stands on TV and declares to people that Jesus is not Lord and in five minutes I was checking her Facebook and she has six million followers six million followers on facebook hallelujah coca-cola has 23 million and i check many churches 10 5 
11, 22, 110. 300, 700, and then a few hundred thousand. Those are the mega ministries. So, can you see that Christianity is not a call to laziness. It's a call to service. Are you following me? So, after you get born again, and you get filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost trains you, and then He sends you. And then He begins to call you. He says, oh no, I'm releasing you to the IT industry. Go and challenge the people. Steve Jobs, of blessed memory, he has gone wherever he is. Hallelujah. And all kinds of people. And he says, I'm sending you. Wherever there is darkness, God sends you as the light. And he says, go as the light. And he comes and says, Mr. Youngs, you draw and you do design. I'm sending you to this industry. He comes and says, Aaron, you are an event planner. And you do logistics i'm sending you to that system he says sweetheart i'm sending you to this system this is um, representing the head of department when he say I'm, I'm sending you reveal my creativity i'm sending you and then we come to church and pray in tongues and build ourselves and the gifts of the church help us and bless us and equip us after church we come out that's why i don't believe in a church that holds service seven times a week that's nonsense Don't stone me. If for seven days in a week you are in church, all the days of your life, you will never affect the system. Because the mission field is not in the church. The mission field is outside the church. He said you are the light of the world, not the church. So we come and we are built. We are equipped. On Monday, you are at work in the bank. And someone comes. And while you are signing the check, you see by the spirit. And he says, sir, you've been having a challenge in your family. And he looks. And then you tell him, I bring you the word of the Lord. I know that you're having a financial problem. Begin to tithe and be serious. Tithing is a principle of the kingdom. And then you just turn his receipt and write your number. Or you write a number of a ministry. He can go and say, God bless you. The king has found expression. Hallelujah. And then you are an architect. And people come and give you a difficult project and you sit down and you lock yourself and say Kabo Sataba Kayaba. I'm not an ordinary person Lord I'm an ambassador make way for me and then God makes the way and in the night while you are sleeping the, the Daniel said while I slept the visions of heaven are communicated unto you and you wake up and you come up with something that will cause the government to call you the government will say how did you do it that's what happened to the three hebrew boys that's what happened to daniel the one we call belshazzar he manifested a dimension and in babylon they saw and they knew that christ was the king it wasn't because he was praying in tongues it was because he could translate this thing god sends you into the business world and you begin to innovate things that alleviate poverty in people's lives and you come to a point where your life is directly blessing people at that point your christianity is meaningful hallelujah and then you come to a point where you are sitting in your house and you just decide and say this week we are going to cook and call our neighbors christians or non-christians without discrimination and you put your beautiful garden because you have received god's prosperity message and so you you have killed greed too in your life and so you understand that you are not just trying to do a favor to build yourself an empire and you bring the people hallelujah let me share with you a few testimonies to the glory of god you see the people that come and and offer us free uh, uh, the bus transport let me say to the glory of god when their leader is not a christian he was sick and his wife put to bed immediately she put to bed the protocol department were in shika we brought him gifts and we greeted them that's why we are friends with them today are you following me now they have been able to see that's why every time they come although we are praying in tongues they enjoy what we are doing they are getting blessed by koinonia because we have given them room to be employed are you following me that's that's what we call strategic apostolic reformation not just making noise in church but coming to a point where the world that as you pray in tongues because of you god gives you an idea and many people are gainfully employed 
even if you are not benefiting so much from it is putting food on the table of others you become a principality that the government must come to terms with there are certain people in this country who have understood this apostolic reformation bless god for their lives building universities that put in the value and the culture of the kingdom hallelujah a man called billy graham all the presidents in america from his time until barack obama they go and pay homage to him why because he has gained a dimension of influence are you listening to me he really didn't raise wheelchairs are you following me now he didn't do all the charismatic things but he understood kingdom and he gained a dimension of influence and because of him many many have come to the saving knowledge of christ rick warren who wrote purpose driven life had been invited many times to the government house to speak for many christians when we invite they invite us to the government house we're just thinking of how we chop and someone who is anointed who loves god suddenly gets to the government house and he's like i beg jerry i'm coming and then you say Shaba, kaba, rata, ba, 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 ba. i see that you and we begin to behave and do all kinds of things because we do not understand let me tell you as a believer everywhere you are realize that the kingdom is in search of expression through you and so you find out what can i do that will bring the kingdom to bear so you go to your community and one day you gather all the young children and cook rice for them and you make poster jesus loves you and you hold something you must not have the name of ministry it mustn't be joshua selman international ministries we like names and we like titles we don't think kingdom unbelievers think kingdom everywhere they go their primary concern is how can the kingdom find expression he said when you pray say this thy kingdom come thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven i've made up my mind that everywhere i go the kingdom will find expression Ejimi makes shirts Look at the beautiful shirts by the media people. This is an artistry and the creativity of one. He is a minister, but he has allowed other areas of his life to find expression and give God glory. Hallelujah. We believe in it. I'm being practical and I'm sharing this. Dio is going for a, a, a media training right now with some of the top media people in this country. Hallelujah. He's going for a training. He's the head of the media. But it's not just about praying in tongues. We realize that we have an agenda. We are going, we are invading the media. And so he's leaving tomorrow and going for a training for a period of two weeks. Certified. Every one of these media people, you see them doing what they are doing, they were trained. Because the church is not just a place to sit down and learn. A, place, a church is the place of building. And any true apostolic move equips people and prepares them to be revivalists. So on one hand, we pray in tongues. On the other hand, we prepare ourselves. Ibo is there. Ibi, can you stand up? Quickly, quickly, quickly stand up. That's a fashion designer. That's a kingdom driven fashion designer on his way to happen now he's coming and he's receiving and he's on his way to happen we are not just praying in tongues are you following me now we are on our way to happen so hear me if all you are thinking about is just church and how i'll have my ministry me and my wife my child will be in charge of media change your mind and begin to think kingdom are you listening to me kingdom think kingdom Many of us need to wake up this night and as you say, your kingdom reigns above all. You say, Lord, I know you are sending me. I hear your voice. I hear your voice. I'm not born again for nothing. I realize that there is an influence of the kingdom that has been mandated upon my life. I told myself, I said, Lord, I will be competent in every area that you have sent me to represent your kingdom. And that means taking that money you are using to buy Timberland, to buy the books and the materials that will equip you for being an ambassador. All this nonsense, instant gratification. Get rich quick. We young people are in it. It's time to sit down and realize that there is a mandate of a generation upon your shoulder. And no matter what sacrifice it will take, that you say, I will do this for my king. And you sit down. 
how many of you guys who want to be fathers how many of you have gone to read any book about principles of fatherhood how many of you have gone to read any book about how to discipline children how many of you have sat to search the word of god and find out how to train children it's not about looking at a lady and liking her how many ladies are ready to sit down to find out your role as a wife a minister and as a mother kingdom advancement i was reading something about billy graham and his wife told him something she said you are an evangelist go i will support you i will stand by you what all this mr big's nonsense that people do someone says hi you say i'm hungry you have not even replied because that's what we watch in nigerian films and all of this we have been trained to believe that marriage is rest relationship not knowing that you sow you wait and then you reap together strategic kingdom advancement hallelujah and some of you god is calling you in the area of business you sleep and you have dreams god is giving you things and satan is telling you i will give you this if you will just bow hear me friends we are the generals of god are you hearing me inside and outside there is a clarion call from the spirit it's time for the citizens of the kingdom to arise the greatest publicity of a kingdom citizen is to remain in the secret place and keep building keep building keep building with one hand you study the word and you learn the principles with another hand you begin to translate the realities of the spirit hallelujah we're talking with steve and he was telling me some of his plans for the future he would sit down and pray and god will give him songs and then he will write them by the time he sings these songs and they are blessing look at some of these songs that are coming from heaven one day god will grant us access and some of you who have been called to this area of music we will release these songs to you and you will raise it i look forward to times when when we tune our radio we we'll just say your kingdom reigns bless god for heal song bless god i love them with my life they are real ambassadors of the kingdom real ambassadors of the kingdom they have no apology for exalting the name of God. if i have a company today you will hold bible study at least once a week in my company you are not interested it's not by force when poverty cains you because there will be darkness out there and we will pay in such a way that you, you cannot reject us. We are going to buy MTV. We are going to buy Channel O. Oh, we will. We will. We will change it to Miracle TV. <laughs> we are not praying in tongues for nothing, friends. We may not look like it. But let me tell you it's in you the bible says now are we the sons of god we are rising our parents like the eli generation have done their best and they are transferring the button to the samuels and we will carry it and represent the kingdom a time will come they'll come and meet you and someone want to bribe you and you hold back his hand and not just say no i don't do it you say no i represent a kingdom don't just say i don't do it someone comes to meet you and says can you come to my hotel I say no i don't do it what you are just trying to say is that uh, i don't do it with you you must let the person know that i represent a kingdom and i'm bounded by a modus operandi and part of it is that we are not engaged in this i have a king and i pay an allegiance to him hallelujah Ejimi does designs when you tell him to do a design for you that is pornographic or has anything that is anti-god he will not do it because you like him you will change your mind ha. i look forward to a time when the world although they don't like us they cannot deny the impact we are bringing that's the time at that time we will gather on sundays and pray and every time we are praying although they do not understand what we are saying they cannot deny the effect is telling on their salaries is telling on the economy you come and meet someone working in your office and like joseph the person is depressed and he say what happened say i was just told i have cancer and he said come with me as the manager of the company say in the name of the lord jesus cancer go and the person is healed and he said i thought it's only in church and he says to let you know that the kingdom of god is advancing 
Hallelujah. So arise, media giants. Arise. Arise. It's not just about praying in tongues and sitting down. The call of the kingdom is a call to responsibility. We are going to pray. We are out of time. We will continue the next time. I will be revealing to us the structure of the kingdom. I really want us to understand the concept of the kingdom. Now you see that is beyond just getting born again. Rise up on your feet. Above all. Above all, your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. Above all, above all, above all, above all. Hey, hey. your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. Responsibility to directly promote the government of heaven in your class, in your job. You have a responsibility of the increase of his government and his peace. There shall be no end. How much of the king are you representing? How much of his glory are you directly representing? Come on, pray. Pray. So go to Bakata. Rain the Sekeli Abara. Rain go so take the Tobaya. Pray. Your kingdom. Your kingdom. The influence of your kingdom. Your character. Your culture. Your lifestyle. Your way. In music, in the media, family life, Christ must be exalted. Make sure you are praying. We are that generation, it's an apostolic generation. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We are going to pray. Hear me. Hear me. You are going to pray one prayer and say, Lord, I receive grace to be competent. Hear me. Many of us right now, from this meeting, go and buy books. Go and buy DVDs that address the area you know God has called you. Sit down and walk. There's room for laziness. Generals are not lazy people. Lift up your voice and pray. I will be competent in the media. I will be competent in politics. Go ahead and pray. It's an apostolic reformation. And also for nominal Christianity. I will pay the price. I will pay the price. I 
me friends this is what Jesus died for this is what Jesus died for we not just win souls but we advance their kingdom so when you get people born again don't leave them there that's why God prepares Koinonia as a platform to equip people changing our minds there's no room for disobedience there's no room for rebellion we may be young people but we are not lawless we have a king above us and we are going somewhere that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God that the media of this world will become the media of our God that the politics of this world will become the politics of our God hear me and that's why you came here tonight for as many who are connecting on the internet and many others who will hear this tape and this the DVDs there is a clarion call it's beyond church it's beyond ENI it's beyond koinonia it's an, an apostolic reformation God is bringing upon the nations Lord we give you praise we are out of time you are worshipping with us for the first time I'd like you to leave your seat and quickly come please we are out of time let's hurry up in this atmosphere leave your seat inside and outside appreciate them the Lord brought you here to bless you inside and outside young and old if this is your first time appreciate them come on give them a big coin on here god bless you clap for them like kingdom citizens yes lord yes lord hallelujah you are the king you see one of our there fathers and our mother yes, yes, lord. Yes. yes lord yes lord yes lord they are coming keep singing they are coming yes, Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise, I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain